Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter. <laughs> we are so excited to be celebrating with you guys. I'm gonna give you a heads up that our sign may fall down during this video. Guys. And if it does, that's okay. We're just gonna let it be. <laughs> There's your warning. <laughs> it's not the sturdiest decor. But it's cute and pretty and I love Easter colors. So it makes me happy. They're so bright and happy. I know. Okay, so I have a question because today we're celebrating Easter and like Jesus rising from the dead, which is amazing. Amazing. But when you celebrate Easter, like if you ever did like a family thing on like, I don't know, a farm or just in your backyard or whatever, did you ever do egg tosses? For all those people who live on farms, <laughs> shout out to you guys. Did you ever do egg tosses? Uh, I don't, like with real eggs? Yeah, like a raw egg, like straight from the fridge. Oh, there's no way Lori would have <laughs> let me do that. That would have been a disaster. Okay, I know. I feel like, because I've seen this. And I've seen it go well because people are creative, but I've also seen it go not well. But it's like one of those things where like if we were standing here, we would need to like build some sort of bridge, whether it was like, you know, we, a little pipe to each other. Like, it would have to be really soft, like mm -hmm. because like the egg would crack, like you didn't want it to crack. It would it. have to be like the perfect bridge. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, speaking of bridges, actually. I was looking up some bridges this week because we're talking about bridges and all that jazz. And so obviously, well, I lived in California, so I know the Golden Gate Bridge. That's in California. And in Tokyo, there's a bridge and it's beautiful. I've been there too. Um, it's like gorgeous. It's this bridge that takes you from one side to the other. The That's infrastructure is amazing. Like yeah. it's gorgeous. And then there's another one in another state. Oh, I just can't remember. But like, um, and yeah. Super cool about the bridges. Yeah, we're talking about Easter today, so just like yeah, yeah, I know. Probably ran it in. I know. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there because Jesus acts like He is our bridge. He is. So if I'm here and like God's over there, I need to get there, but I can't just have access to the Father. So when Jesus died and took on my sin and rose again, He actually became the perfect, like the ultimate bridge. So are we the eggs? I, I mean, I guess. Or the cars. Whatever you prefer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Good thing there's a story that's going to explain it. <laughs> but do you see what I did there? Yeah, I did. Okay, 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 good. I'm tracking now. It was, it was a little all over the place, but we got there. We got there. We arrived at the end of the bridge. I just like to keep everyone on their toes. Like, where's she going today? What's she doing? Like, I'm not really sure how these things make sense. But got so it. let's jump into the video. Hopefully it'll be way clearer than me and then we'll be back after. Okay, bye you guys.
What happened to the rest of the bridge? We were almost done. Have you been eating the peeps? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Lawson. And Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. We are so glad you're hanging out with us on this very special day. We sure are. And now, some interesting facts about Easter. Oh, cool. cool. I got a rope. Watch this. Boom. All uh -huh. cool. All right. And you got the egg, a little <laughs> egg. Oh, jelly beans. Oh, fun. OK. All right. Aha. All right. Interesting Easter fact number one. Americans consume more than 16 billion jelly beans every year. That is actually enough jelly beans to circle the globe three times. That's a lot of jelly beans. Do you have any more facts? Do I have more facts? Brandon, I'm a fax machine. You're a fax machine? Forget it. Oh. 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 Whew. oh, good catch. Thank you. Oh, okay, here we are. Interesting Easter fact number two. On April 1st, 2007, the largest ever Easter egg hunt had 9,753 children searching for 501,000 eggs. That's nuts. No, it was eggs. It's an egg hunt. It's right here. Interesting Easter fact number three. Ah! 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 It's Bible story time with Kellen! Oh. Thank you. No! Ah! Ah! Hey guys, happy Easter to you both. Right back at you, Kellen. Happy Easter to you. I love Easter. Easter's so fun. I'm so glad today is Easter. What story are you telling, Kellen? Uh, Easter? Great. Okay. Before I tell you about Easter, I think it's best if I give you a little backstory. In fact, we should really start in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the earth and the sky and, well, everything. He made a man named Adam and a woman named Eve. Hey, I'm Adam. You come here often? I'm Eve and, uh, no, I just got here. Cool, me too. Adam and Eve lived peacefully in paradise with God until they made a very poor choice. You see, God had only given them one rule. Don't eat the fruit from a certain tree. But... Hey, let's eat from that tree. Once they broke God's rule, the world became broken, and sin separated people from God and broke their relationships with one another. There was no more peace but God had a plan. Years later, God chose a man named Abraham. I'm old, like really old, like first generation iPod old. He was old, and even though he didn't have any children, God had promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed through his descendants. The whole world? <laughs> Did he say descendants? So Abraham's wife, Sarah, had a baby Ooh. named Isaac. And Isaac grew up and had two babies. And then they grew up and had even more babies. Abraham's descendants grew and grew. And they became known as the Israelites, God's chosen people. But they still didn't have peace. They didn't have peace when the Israelites were taken as slaves in Egypt. Let my people go! And they didn't have peace when God chose Moses to lead people out of slavery. The Lord has parted the sea so we can escape Egypt. Follow me. They didn't have peace when God led them to the promised land. Where's the milk and honey? I thought it'd be bigger. I wish we had a king like the other nations. So God gave them a king. Hello. I am your king. Meh, I've seen better. We want a new God. <clears throat> Nothing brought God's people peace. 
but God wasn't finished yet. You see, hundreds of years later in the town of Bethlehem, a descendant of Abraham that would bless the whole world was about to be born. The baby's name was Jesus, and he would become a man who loved people deeply, and he would show us how to love people the way he did. So Jesus loves us so much that he gave his life on a cross to pay for our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. That's because of what Christ has done. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Jesus paid for every sin ever committed and every sin that would ever be committed. People would no longer have to be separated from God. And with God's help, people would make peace with one another. But the story of Easter doesn't end with Jesus' death on the cross. On the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb to cover his body with spices. That's odd. Someone has rolled away the stone. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Mary Magdalene ah! ran to find Jesus' disciples. Peter and John returned with her, and in the tomb, they found linen cloths that were used to wrap Jesus' body. But they did not find Jesus, so they returned home, leaving Mary behind in the garden. I can't believe Jesus is gone. Hello, sir. Y you must be the gardener. Did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. Teacher. And as soon as the man spoke, Mary knew it was Jesus, alive. He had come back from the dead. Jesus is more powerful than sin. He's more powerful than death. And because of him, we can have peace with God and with each other as God intended from the beginning. And that is the story of Easter. We should tell that story every year. We do. Awesome. It is awesome. Before Jesus, we had lost our connection with God. Our relationship was broken. Jesus' death and resurrection, it helped rebuild what was broken and reconnect us with our Creator. Amazing. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. Peace out. Oh, and happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. <laughs> Only one thing left to do now. Ooh, I was thinking the same thing. Oh. Huh. <laughs> so, uh, was that supposed no. to- No! Reveal the question! <laughs> Why does Easter matter? What do you say, Lawson? I guess it's really the reason we're here. It's true. Jesus' resurrection is the most amazing thing that has ever happened. That's why we can't stop talking about it. What do you think? Why does Easter matter? Talk about it together. And we'll see you next week for a brand new show. Bye. Happy Easter. Happy rope. What are you going to do with all that? Make a fort. <laughs> oh, a rope fort. Yes. First of its kind. You can't come in. Huh, why not? You don't have the password. The password's rope. Oh, well now I can come in. Easter is so important because without the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we would not have access to God and eternal life like we do. It's kind of like Christmas is the first part of the story and like really exciting that it's here, but it doesn't like totally make sense until you know about Easter and you know yeah. about how Jesus died for our sins and rose again. Yeah, and because of what he did, like way back in the Old Testament, they used to have to follow these laws to have connection with God. And it was like, it was like going over a clunky, unfinished bridge. So I'm just gonna go back to my illustrations here. Yeah. So, you know, they still had access, but it was like only specific people could have like deep relationship, like primary access. And, but then Jesus came and when he died and rose again, and he gave us, anyone can have access, anybody. Even if you're like a flawed person, which y'all are right here. <laughs> <laughs>
it's pretty incredible that Jesus is the ultimate way to have peace with God. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, that's the best thing that we could ever ask for. Seriously. And so if you haven't done that yet, we want to invite you to, to do that, to make Jesus Lord of your life so you can have that peaceful, amazing connection with God the Father who created the universe. He wants to have a relationship with you through Jesus. What? Like, it doesn't get old. It just, like, it doesn't. It seriously is the best decision. And Anne and I can stand here and attest to the fact that this is the best decision we've ever made in our entire lives. Mm -hmm. But it's also a big decision. And so it's something that we would love for you to be able to talk about with your parents or talk about someone who you know has already made that decision to ask them, what's it like for you? Right. And, And they'll probably tell you it's the best, not easy, but the best. Yeah. And so we want to pray for you today. We want to pray that if you feel like making that decision, that you would have the courage to go talk to, like like Holly said, your parents or someone else safe, another safe adult who can lead you through this and, and just talk to you about what it all means. And so let's pray. We'll thank Jesus and we'll pray about that. Oh, so Lord, thank you. Thank you that you came to earth as a human, Jesus, and you died and you took on our sin and you you rose again so that we could have this peaceful amazing connection with the father that we could be granted eternal life through knowing you through having relationship with you and through making you lord of our life so father we pray for anyone who wants to make this decision holy spirit i pray that you would go be with them right now i pray over the conversations that are going to happen I pray that you would equip parents and safe adults. And Father, I just ask that you would move in people's lives, that they would know you. God, that others, because of their decision, because of these students' decisions, other people would get to know you, and other people and other people. God, we know you work in a ripple effect way. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would do that now. We love you, and we are so grateful that you chose to send your son, Jesus, to change our lives forever. Amen. Amen. Man, what an exciting Sunday. I love Easter. I know, it's so great. We hope that you guys have a great rest of your day, however you are celebrating, whether it's at home with your family, or egg hunts, or turkey dinners, or whatever it is. Maybe at a park. Yeah. Um, Who knows? The day, the day is young. So <laughs> we hope you have an awesome day. And um, yeah, we're just so excited about uh, your decision to follow Jesus is the biggest decision and the best decision. So think about it. Yeah. And, and let your parents know. They can let us know if you do. We'd love to celebrate along with you. And uh, yeah, just be a part of that journey. So we will see you next week. Have a fantastic week. Bye. Bye.